what I really want to talk about is uh, this vision of applying geography everywhere and the implications of that uh, on trends in business. So geography really is the integrating science that uh, basically touches every person on the planet every day of our lives. It is the science that brings the world together and I believe it sets the stage and the context for uh, everything around us. Uh, we feel that we're entering into a new era of what we call geographic enlightenment. This is a new age, a new era where the public and citizens of the, uh, the global community are becoming more aware of the power and the benefits that geospatial information can bring to their ordinary lives. GIS really is the platform that enables this to happen. Uh, it is a platform for applying geography everywhere. But why is this? Well, for two reasons. One, it provides not only the framework that allows this to happen, but also the processes that, that uh, enable it. From capturing information, storing it, visualizing it, analyzing it, developing models that can then predict where it's going, uh, mining big data, big data analytics. These are inputs into the decision-making process for businesses. And ultimately, these decisions result in actions that produce business results. So this is very, very logical, natural framework uh, that's actually accelerating very rapidly. And partly because of this, GIS itself is changing. There is a new pattern that we see emerging in GIS. Uh, it's enabled by these business trends, but also the technical barriers that were in the way in the past have all fallen away. So we no longer have to worry about uh, the, the barriers of uh, massive compute intensive uh, operations. We now see cloud enablement, we see big data, we see uh, social media, we see mobile devices, and all these things combined together to set the stage for this new pattern that we call WebGIS. WebGIS is a transformational architecture. If you look at this slide on the left side of the slide, you'll see pretty much for the last 50 years, the traditional approach, what we would call GIS as a system of record, where in the little uh, canister uh, is a geodatabase. Uh, and this is where we used to store maps and imagery and metadata, and we'd load everything, download everything into a geodatabase, and do the analysis on the server or the desktop, and that's, that worked well and continues to work well for, uh, for many organizations. But the play is moving, the ground is shifting, and it's shifting toward a much more dynamic uh, environment, and you've heard all the speakers this morning in this panel and the previous panel talk about this. We see this new emergence of uh, a dynamic environment moving from a system of record to a system of engagement, where this center of gravity in the middle is no longer a geodatabase, but it's a geoinformation model. Let's take a little bit closer look at the center of that. Uh, this geoinformation model is not a database. It's essentially an elegant set of pointers that connect you to these dynamic distributed services. These are living services. So they're connected sort of like a nervous system or like a, a wiring harness into this new environment. And as Maladin said earlier, we need a new language to communicate with this environment. And this is where a new uh, generation of apps come in. So this is really what WebGIS is all about. Well, what difference does that make to business? What effect is that having on business? Well, on the left half of this slide, you'll see sort of the traditional stovepipe business pyramid. Uh, groups down at the bottom that are collecting their own data, not talking to each other, uh, duplicating data. Group in the middle doing analysis of the data, again, not talking to each other, have redundant data, gaps in data. And these results get trickled up to the top of the pyramid where senior executives, uh, a small number of them make some decisions, oftentimes on, on faulty and incomplete data. That's sort of the traditional method, but moving forward, a GIS in, an, in a new world, in a, in a web GIS world, operates on this geoinformation model. This geoinformation model provides shared knowledge, shared information, shared intelligence, where everyone is collaborating off of a common information base. It not only sets the stage uh, for more accurate and, and, and dynamic capabilities, but it hopefully will also result in much better decision making. So the mayor of the second largest city in the United States gets this idea very clearly. The mayor of Los Angeles said, I want more than just open data. I don't want to just make my data open. I want an open platform. I want open services. I want to connect my schools, my innovative business startups, my citizens, uh, 
uh, all the different elements of the constituencies that we have, we want them to operate all off of an open platform, an open system with open services. And so they're actually implementing this now with great success. So this open platform has significant meaning uh, across the entire industry. It builds on top of the great work that Mark Reichardt and his entire team at OGC have been doing for years, uh, in addition to focusing on uh, supporting industry standards and also providing an open COTS software platform with uh, open services, open APIs, a uh, significant amount of uh, open source capabilities that are connected, the main goal of which is to make these systems interoperable with each other, all for the benefit of making the end users successful. The new language, uh, as we talked about, is apps. Apps uh, are custom tailored ways of looking at these web GIS capabilities in very interesting ways. If you go into organizations uh, that are doing real work, um, you'll ask them what business are you in. They don't say that they're in the GIS business. Now we're in the business of protecting lives and property or managing corporate assets or protecting uh, precious valuable resources. So these apps speak a new language, uh, just as uh, earlier speaker said, uh, on the tractor. They don't want a map, they want color, they respond to color and sound. So there's a new language of apps, not only for field workers, knowledge workers in the field, uh, business executives in the office, and even the public. Uh, the public loves storytelling. How do you communicate effectively? Like when we were children, your grandparents would tell you stories and you're captivated by them. So now GIS has entered this new world of storytelling. Um, one of the things that we've done recently is developed this thing called Story Maps, and it's really gone viral. Viral. It's just quite, quite amazing. It's a great way of connecting and communicating with people. We also uh, understand that it's important for organizations that want to build their own apps and their own capabilities, and you have to support that as well. So for non-technical groups, there are these uh, templates, uh, web app templates, where you can click them together like Legos and very quickly skin your own app to represent your organization. Uh, then there are things called Web App Builder that actually allow you to build your own apps from scratch very easily. And then if you want to uh, put a mobile device out on any one of these different mobile platforms, uh, there's something called App Studio that allows you to exploit all the native devices that are different between an iOS system versus an Android system. So these are all technology tools that are available today to help businesses connect to GIS and bring it out uh, directly into their operational environments. For organizations that are already underway doing productive work uh, and they need some advice about how to uh, adhere to best practices. Uh, what are the industry standard ways of doing things? How can we help them? How can we make software and the tools smarter? Don't make the user smarter, but make the software smarter so they can follow the guidance and the lead of other successful users. So these solution templates uh, uh, are again an open source capability that are available, hundreds of them available. Uh, I think it says here over a half a million downloads of these things have already happened. So organizations all over the world are using these templates that share the work experience of, uh, of others uh, to adhere to uh, best professional practices. Uh, for uh, mission critical organizations that actually do uh, mission critical work, whether it's uh, aeronautical charting, uh, maritime charting, topographic mapping and so forth, they're very specific solution products, again, that are built uh, all around the idea of making it easy for professionals to get productive work done without having to go back and, and learn uh, technical complicated training. Uh, it's the same level of support for the boardroom uh, and decision support systems. Um, uh, interesting example for us is we had a, a very large oil company that uh, I guess should remain anonymous but whose name rhymes with Shell Oil Company. <laughs> had uh, just a couple of hundred copies of the software in the GIS department in the basement and by bringing this uh, web-based platform of engagement to the corporation, uh, 200 seats grew to 9,000 seats and now from the basement to the boardroom, uh, uh, the people at all levels of the organization can see into exactly what's going on, whether it's from exploration, whether it's production, uh, whether it's research, uh, the status of the information. And this is the power of unlocking the capability of a web GIS. Our California neighbor up the street, Google, uh, contacted us not long ago 
uh, with a wonderful invitation. Asked us if we'd like to collaborate with them on um, helping uh, some of their enterprise users become more successful with GIS. Well, of course, the answer was yes. We jumped at the chance, and so this fall we're releasing a, a new product called ArcGIS Earth. This is for the business enterprise users of Google uh, who want a very simple 2D and 3D environment. It's totally free. It supports KML, uh, WMS, WCS, all these open standards. It allows them to connect to GIS in meaningful ways, get meaningful work done, and a collaboration between uh, Google and Esri. We're very, very, very happy about this, and they're a great partner, Google. So I'd like to end up with a simple slide that says, uh, uh, when you're changing the landscape and reinventing yourself, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And this is what's happening with GIS today. GIS is being reinvented as we speak in this remarkable new era of WebGIS.